Good morning. It's December 27th. This is Troy Patton, CPA Investment Advisor for Archer Investment Corporation. I'd like to welcome everyone to the call. This is a recording, so hopefully everybody has time to listen to this because I think there are some important things that we want to talk about. We're getting some uh, requests and calls just about the market in general and what's been going on. And although we're going to put out our annual outlook for 2019, I thought it'd be prudent just to get out in front of everybody and talk a little bit about the market what's been going on and, frankly, why the market's been stalling here and, and more than just stalling but uh, dropping, uh, as we can see. So I titled my first slide, let's just jump into it, the 2019 Outlook, How the Grinch Stole Christmas in 2018. And, you know, I mean, we've been on a great wild ride uh, for the bulls, I mean, literally for the past 10 years. I mean, the market's up nearly 300%. Even, you know, and a lot of people say, yeah, but, I mean, the market's dropped here recently, and, I mean, we're down 20%. We entered bear territory, um, you know, here in, in, in 2018. And, and, frankly, it's probably one of the worst Decembers ever, and it's and are shaping up to be one of the worst Decembers ever on record. But one of the things I want to point out to everybody is we really need to put this all in perspective. And, and when I say that, you know, we go back and we say from 2008, you know, to the current, the market's up 300%. And a lot of people are going to say, well, yeah, but the market dropped so far so fast. Absolutely true. But even, even with taking that into account, let's just say, for instance, that the market, before we dropped, the S&P 500 crossed about 1,500 um, before it dropped to somewhere around 667. So from, from even those 1,500 levels, up until where we are today, I mean, we're still almost at about a 7% return on the market, you know, for those years. So, I mean, even before the drop. So that's still very respectable, especially in a low-growth environment that we've been in, especially given the, the the debt debacle that we've had. I mean, the quantitative easing, the housing bubble, and and, and you know, some of the geopolitical concerns that we've seen. So with all that being said, I mean, we've overcome all these things. And as I've always said in the past, is that the United States is undefeated in comebacks. And this time is no different. And so what I'm going to tell you here is, again, this is, again, no different. I mean, we broke a ton of records in 2018. And I, I've listed just a few of these. But one of the things, I mean, if you go down and look at these, I mean, 20% earnings growth in 2018, and these are projected amounts because we're not quite done yet with the year, okay? It'd be the highest annual earnings growth reported by the S&P 500 since 2010. That's pretty significant, right? 8.9% revenue growth in, the, in 2018. I mean, these, these numbers are fantastic. Um, it, I mean, just look at all these records that, you know, we continue to, we continue to see. And again, you know, going to our next slide, I mean, if we take a look at our earnings per share on the S&P 500, and again, I'm just talking about those 500 companies that make up the S&P 500. We've really seen some great growth here in 2017 and 2018. And as we can see, Right here on the chart, I mean, we've really seen some exponential growth. But one of the things I think I want to point out, probably more importantly than where we have been, is where we're going. Because I think that's always important, and that's going to tell us, uh, you know, what, what the market's going to do in the future. If you look at this period of time from 2000, the end of 2010, all the way over to probably the start of or middle of 2016, right around in here, even into 2017. I mean, earnings earnings grew, but they were somewhat flat. And this is actually during that fantastic expansion, not only expansion in multiples of the S&P 500, but the the expansion in price. And that's what and that's where we saw a lot of that 300% return, you know, from this bottom. Because obviously this bottom is horrible. I, I, I get it. You know, I'm not I'm not going to be the first person that says you know the the, the Great Recession um, didn't hurt everybody um, because it did. And, and I mean it was and it was very um, I guess it was very traumatic for everyone. And even bef and before that, you know, we had some really solid growth. I mean, back from 2003 up to up to about 2007, and then we started to falter. But even through this period of time, this 2010 to 2016 period, earnings did not grow that that much. 
And in fact, we had a little bit of a downturn in 2014, even to 20, into 2016. And some of you may even remember that the market did falter during that period of time. It didn't, it didn't, uh, go down uh, like a, uh, like a lot of people expected. A lot of people were saying, oh, it's the, it's the next big dip in the market. That's not what happened. And I don't think that's what's going to happen this time. Because if we take a look at everything, uh, in, in the market that's going on, with revenue growth, earnings growth, the tax cuts, yes, although although they uh, impacted us really just this first year, and we've only seen the first year, they still are they're still in existence, and those and those tax cuts are going to help us uh, to continue to grow and help the economy and, and the companies to continue to put cash in their pockets. And if you look at this little table down here at the bottom, these are basically the consensus forecasts. Uh, as of December 13th and December 20th, and as you can see, they are they have come down a bit, and I think that's normal. And for 2019, let's let's say those those consensus estimates are at 174.61 currently. Okay, let's just say they're at 165. All right, at 165, that would actually mean that over time, even even at a 15 multiple. A, full, a multiple of 15, the market would be probably fairly priced right around 2,500. So as we're off that 2,500 mark, and we'll, we'll get to that here in a second, I really want to tell everybody that it, it's it's important to understand that these are just, not only are these estimates, and even into 2020, the 194, I, I really believe that even with our economy faltering here a little bit, or people are saying it's slowing down and we have some other geopolitical problems and even political problems here on our own uh, shores, We these two shall pass. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Now, it doesn't go without saying that there might be some issues. We often see recessions, uh, you know, predicated by an, an inverted yield curve. And I talked a little bit about this in my last quarterly uh, discussion and, and outlook, but one of the things I do want to point out to you, and each of, each of these gray bars on this chart represents a, a recession. Okay, and a recession is indicated by a negative GDP growth. Well, for 2019, we're really not expected to have a negative GDP growth. In fact, it's supposed to be somewhere around the two and a half percent level. Okay. With that being said, I really don't see a recession on the horizon, at least for 2019. I'm not saying that it can't happen, and I'm not saying that we won't talk ourselves into it, because uh, we clearly have some issues going on uh, with uh, possibly uh, a government shutdown, um, a fight over the over the uh, border wall. Um, we have a Fed that uh, clearly has not studied any bit of history in terms of market uh, uh, reactions to um, Fed rate increases, um, but with that being said, I really don't see, I don't really see a recession on the horizon at least at this point in time. And at this point in time, with two and a half percent GDP growth, yes, it is going to be less than last year. Okay, I mean it, it's it's definitely going to come down, but it doesn't mean we have to enter into a recession. But it does mean that the market will probably be more volatile. Okay, all right. Let's move to the uh, next slide here. Whoops, sorry about that. I think I pulled up something there, uh, if I can. Okay, all right. The ten-year to one-year uh, yield spread and real growth. Again, the gray the gray is the uh, uh, recession recessionary periods that we've faced. And as you can see, I mean, we are getting close to that. And the gray bars do indicate recessions. Um, but again. Just because uh, we have an inverted yield curve doesn't mean the recession comes instantly. In fact, an inverted yield curve oftentimes will precede a recession. But we don't have to. We don't necessarily have to have an inverted yield curve to have a recession either. I mean, so um, I, I really think I, I time will tell. I mean, if we do see an inverted yield curve, obviously, I would say all bets are off, and the market will probably uh, falter a bit into 2019. But I, I, I really just don't see that happening at this point in time. Okay, it doesn't mean that we won't have a recession at some point. We are. We're going to. We're going to have a slowdown. But I don't think. I don't think it's in the cards for 2019 unless it's brought upon our, uh, our shores by our own leaders. Okay. In fact, I want to show. 
what the S&P 500 earnings and revenue growth are, if you take a look at uh, uh, the revenue growth that we've had over, I mean, back from 2010, which is the green bar, uh, into 2018, we really had some solid earnings, uh, earn, earning and revenue growth here. And I think even though 2019 on a year over year basis will be less, we also have to remember that we just had two years, 2017 and 2018, that were very solid. So I don't, I really don't think, um, I, I don't see a negative there at all in terms of earnings or revenue growth. Okay. The other thing I want to point out is net profit margins in companies are continuing to expand. This has actually been going on for some time, and people have, even back when it was at 8%, people said, oh my gosh, we're at an all-time high net profit margin. We'll never go any higher. This is the end of the rainbow for us, and the market's going to sunset. That was back even in 2011 and 2012, and everybody was calling for that second dip. And again, they did again in 2015, 2016, when the markets faltered a bit because our net profit margins declined. For heaven's sake, folks, profit margins continue to go up. I'm not saying they can go up forever because they can't, but at the same time, with net profit margins of 11 to 11 point, 11 to 12 percent, somewhere in that range, or even 10 percent, I don't even care if they went back to 9 percent, companies are making money. Their, their profits are growing. They're increasing. Uh, I mean, we've seen it over and over and over. Okay. Yes, interest rates are moving higher, but with that being said, interest rates are still not impacting the bottom lines of corporations to the extent that people would think. Um, rates are still low, um, although uh, I, I will say this, uh, even though they're low, the Fed can still make a policy mistake, whether it be from two to two and a quarter or two and a quarter to two and a half, or even at a half percent to, ha- to three quarters of a percent. So it's not that they can't make a mistake, and frankly, I do think that they've over overshot on the uh, rate increases here. But with that being said, our profit margins are continuing to expand in companies because companies are becoming innovative uh, more and more, and they're uh, frankly looking to put more earnings to the bottom line. Okay, uh, earnings growth. All right. If we take a look at earnings growth, I think this is real, this is a really good slide because one of the things I, I want to point out is that we're seeing a very big disparity between earnings here in the United States versus overseas. Um, everybody's very familiar with the tariff issues we have going on with uh, China and some of the other countries. But with that being said, the, co- the companies here in the United States in the S&P 500 indicated by the light blue bar, our earnings growth is really still very exceptional. If the, the companies... Um, uh, that have less than 50% of their sales in the U.S. is the green bar, the 6.9% and 4.7%, okay, revenue growth and earnings growth. All, all I'm saying here is that companies that are located here in the United States are doing very well. Our tax structure has changed. It's helped out all the companies here in the United States. Those Those companies that are doing more and more business internationally, are not going to grow quite as fast. China is slowing. A lot of the emerging markets are slowing. A lot of the developed countries around the world are also slowing. And they're slowing because they don't necessarily have the same monetary policy that we have. The U.S. dollar has continued to gain strength, um, uh, even probably, uh, um, I would probably argue that maybe uh, we, we don't want the U.S. dollar quite as strong. But with that being said, the dollar has gained strength. Earnings growth uh, is still climbing, but yet not at the same clip as here in the United States. And I think a lot of that has to do, frankly, with the tax cuts offered to the corporations last year. Okay? All right. To, just to show this point a little bit further, and this was on October 31st, 2018, and J.P. Morgan uh, actually put this out the other day, and I think it was a really good chart, and that's why I wanted to include it here. Is this purple... The purple bar is really the, our international um, earnings uh, or, or priced earnings multiple. And at that point in time, it was 11.9. I actually think it's more like around 11 or 11 and a half. I've got it on a slide here coming up. And ours was at 15.5, even though we're around 15 uh, right now, uh, maybe a little bit higher as of uh, yesterday well, with yesterday's move. But there is a very large disparity between the United States, and the rest of the world right now. And I do think 
that those will come together at some point. And I think, it, as you can see, I mean, those multiples, the S&P 500, when our average, I say, is uh, the 20-year average of 15.9 in dividend yield, I, kind of, I put that on another chart here a little bit further um, just to make it really simple. Our current uh, P.E. multiple and our 25-year average, same with the dividends, our international P.E., and and the same with uh, the dividends as well. Basically, the bottom line is this. International is undervalued. Uh, obviously, international uh, investments have been hurt quite a bit more than the United States investments, but I, I look to see that probably changing at some point in time over the next three years. And again, uh, when I, I'll speak in terms of three years, even five years, um, we are long-term investors. You should be a long-term investor. Um, if you're a short-term investor, it's probably not a good market to be in. But long-term investors, I think, are going to be rewarded for buying into this uh, dip in the market or this bear market that we've just seen. Um, but, um, you know, time will tell. Uh, I, I, I still think there's a big disparity between value and growth, and that's been going on. I pointed that out in our last newsletter. And I, I, I think that's something also to pay attention to. I think value is a great place for investments. Okay, I, I I thought this chart was really uh, uh, fantastic, also because a lot of people are saying, "Oh my gosh, rates are rising." I mean, what, you know, what are we going to do? I mean, so this is when when yields are below five percent and rising rates have historically been associated with rising stock prices. Because people think, "Oh my gosh, rates are rising." I mean, that you know the the stock market's going to go down. It's not so. I put a I put a big orange box up here. This upper left quadrant that we're looking at right here basically shows that the market is generally positive even when rates are rising as long as the 10-year treasury is below 5%. Really simple. There are times yes that it is negative, but I mean, if you look at this, I, it's overwhelming that the market is still positive, okay? Now, one of the things we have to worry about with these rising rates is the fact that the Fed is also trying to uh, couple that with the reduction of their balance sheet. And th that is something that we have not seen or faced in this world, or I guess in modern times, where the Fed has increased their balance sheet so significantly from the quantitative easing that they're also trying to reduce that balance sheet while raising rates. It almost has a double impact on um, on the on the rising rates, and that's one of the reasons why I think they need to slow down in, in raising rates. Because typically, when the Fed raises rates, we really don't see the um, the impact of those raises uh, for the next three to six months. So I really think it makes more sense to pause, see what's going on. Uh, in the economy, see how those rate impacts, and then the reduction of that balance sheet is going to impact the economy. Uh, clearly, uh, uh, Powell uh, has other uh, visions in his mind, and um, you know I'm not going to I'm not going to guess what those are. But frankly, I think he's dead wrong. So, okay, this is again that that uh, same chart that I think I showed in the third quarter outlook of the growth versus value. We've actually seen value tick up here a bit as the market's faltered, um, but it, typically I really believe that uh, value uh, is has been oversold for some time and, and uh, will probably make uh, some kind of resurgence into the market. Yeah, I, it is possible that growth drops, but um, uh, just to give you a great example, companies like FedEx trading at a eight or nine forward multiple, or seven or even if it's seven, eight or nine forward multiple, I think companies like that are great companies to own. Uh, we own those uh, in our stock fund and dividend fund, and so obviously many of you own that in your portfolio. But companies like that uh, that are still making great money, have good cash flow, are great companies to own for the next five to ten years. I think this is a real intriguing slide. Um, I, I pulled this up yesterday and wanted to point out a couple things because, uh, and, I, and obviously I, I printed this off yesterday. It looks like about 2:30. The market has definitely been an oversold territory, and I just want to kind of point out where I put these yellow circles, and you can see where these yellow circles. This is where the market has been oversold. Okay, 
And you can see that the market does continue to decline and oftentimes just soon after that, just as it probably will this time. Yesterday's 5% bounce, um, I will tell you, some of you may, in fact, I think I had maybe even a couple of calls, people saying, oh man, I missed the, I missed that bottom. I, I probably should have invested right there. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't worry about it. I'd keep investing because it's likely that we retest that low one more time to see if we're going to hold it. If we do hold that low and the market then moves higher, then I think, you know, obviously the momentum will carry the market possibly to even new highs or at least, you know, I mean, we'll, we'll fight our way back there over, over a period of time. And maybe we've even seen that ultimate low. Uh, and it, it'll be a brief bear market in December, which is somewhat unusual. Uh, but, uh, Santa's sled, uh, broke down and he just came here a little bit later. So anyways, if we take a look at these yellow circles, you can, we can see here, obviously the market dropped, continued to drop, but then it ultimately moved higher. And these, this, any time that this, uh, oscillator gets underneath this 30 mark, it basically means that the market has been oversold. And as you can see, the bear market ended soon after that each time. All right, and then we started to move higher. Even if you look at back into 08, 09, you know, towards the towards 08, I mean, the market was oversold. It bounced, it kind of came back down. It was still oversold, and again, had I think back then uh, when the market was at uh, 815 on its way down, I think I told everybody, hey, the market's oversold. You got to buy. You got to buy. Everybody get into the market. Well, the market then dropped to 667, and I think people are like, "Oh my gosh, Troy! I mean, the market just went down. You know, uh, I mean, another uh, another 15 percent. You know, what are you, what are you talking about? The market was way oversold, and then we started to see that bounce back again. It, it bounced back, and then again got to that oversold position once again as we started to decline. The market continued to decline a little bit further, and then it started to move higher. It, it again, I think this time. We're, as we're starting to get into that oversold territory, it doesn't mean that the market can't drop a little bit further and head down further and retest those lows as it, as it stays in that oversold territory and then ultimately moves higher. I really, I, I don't think this time's any different. I could take this chart back to, I mean, the last 30 years and we'd see the same thing over and over and over again. Okay. All right. With that said, I'm going to wrap up here. I know I'm, I'm getting a little long-winded, but I just want to I just want to point out a couple things. There's we have some very positive things going on in the economy. We saw a 19.1% increase in online sales uh for for this holiday season. 19.1%. Hey, online buying of gifts or online purchases is nothing new. We've been doing it for the last several years and a 19% increase that's tremendous. I mean, companies like Walmart uh, are doing extremely well with their online sales. Uh, Amazon, obviously, has done fantastic. A lot of those companies. But that's why I, I think uh, also companies like FedEx are going to do well. Because what, even if Amazon creates their own shipping department or and, and freight service, that still is only about 1% to 1.5% maybe of FedEx's business, companies like that are going to continue to do well. And in addition to that, gas prices at the pump are are very low right now. We're down at about two dollars, two fifteen. Some some of you are probably two thirty a gallon, uh, maybe as we speak. In some of the you know the coastal uh, areas, maybe even a little bit higher. But gas prices at the pump are still low. That's putting money in the pocket of the consumer. And then again, positive GDP. Our gross domestic product is still growing, yet it is going to grow a little bit slower. We're not going to, we had a big impact on those tax cuts in 2018. We're not going to see that for 2019, but, it, but it's still going to move forward. It's still going to be positive. We do have some negatives on the forefront, and I do want to point those out, and those are the tariffs. Hopefully the United States and China will get that resolved maybe sometime here in the first quarter. If, if they get that resolved, I do think that's going to be a big boost uh, as well. Um, as I mentioned, the Fed, I think, you know, if they continue to raise rates uh, um, without, uh, without caution, I do think that could also cause an additional problem. And then the government shutdown. It looks to me like uh, this border wall thing is going to be – um, uh, come to some kind of blows. I mean, I think, uh, you know, we're asking for maybe about 0.1%, uh, you know, of our GDP or, 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 excuse me, of our budget on the border wall. I mean, whether you think that's a good thing or a bad thing, I'm not here to debate that. Um, but I, I think the government shutdown is probably not a great thing. But at the same time, um, 
you know, I've always said that, you know, we've had other government shutdowns before and the market still moved higher. So with that being said, I'm giving you kind of three positives, three negatives here heading into 2019, but I put the positives on top because I do think they outweigh the negatives. And I think with that being said, we will continue to have a positive uh, market into 2019, um, albeit with a little bit more caution. Um, and uh, uh, look for our annual outlook in 2019. I'll put something in print, about four or five pages with a few graphs, just talking about a few things, maybe even some of the things here. I do think that the market was a bit oversold, uh, and, and obviously we got that big bounce yesterday. Um, we'll see what happens today. Uh, but anyways, good luck, and if anyone ever has any questions, feel free to reach out, and I'm always available to talk to anyone. Thank you very much. Everybody have a great 2019.